Hello, I'm Maria Barantini, Pastoral Associate for Children's Catechesis at Prince of Peace. The readings for August 23rd are Isaiah 22, verse 19 through 23, Psalm 138. The second reading comes from Romans 11, verse 33 through 36, and the gospel is Matthew 16, verses 13 through 20. Early in the pandemic, one of the videos I made was about the practice of Lectio Divina. You can go back and watch that for further explanation, but Psalm 138 is a great psalm to read while practicing Lectio Divina. I'm going to briefly remind you what the four steps of Lectio Divina are, but you can go back to that video to find out further information if you'd like. Step one, read. You want to read the verses slowly, and you may want to read it several times. Step two, meditation. This is a time to think about the scripture. Ask yourself the following questions as you think. What is happening in the story? What words jump out at me? What does this passage say to me? Prayer is step three. In this step, we ask to have a conversation with God about what we have heard or thought about after reading the passage. The questions we should ask ourselves in this step are, what would I like to say to God? What questions do I ha want to ask God about these verses? Step four, contemplation. This is an opportunity to rest with God and listen to God. This step is when we try to really listen to God. And we really want a quiet space for this step. The question we ask ourselves here is what change is the Lord asking me to make after hearing this passage? What change is the Lord asking me to make after hearing this passage? So we're just going to talk a little bit about Psalm 138 here. And then we're going to talk about the gospel. But I recommend using Lectio Divina to read these yourself. In Psalm 138, the writer of this psalm is expressing his gratitude to God. He is thankful that God has come to his rescue, and he says in verse 3, On the day I cried out, you answered. You strengthened my spirit. In times of trouble, it is easy to wonder if God hears us. We can be encouraged by reading Psalm 138, verse 3. God hears our cries. Our prayers may be awkward. They might not be the most eloquent thing, but God still hears those prayers. Pour out your joys, fears, and concerns out to God in prayer. He hears you. In verse 7 through 8, we hear how the psalmist, having experienced God's salvation, trusts that God will always be there in the moments of danger. Listen to verse 7 through 8. Though I walk in the midst of danger, your guard, you guard my life when my enemies rage. You stretch out your hands, your right hand saves me. The Lord is with me in the end, Lord. Your mercy endures forever. Never forsake the work of your hands. When we're singing or listening to the cantor at Mass, you hear the following repeated, Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. That response comes directly from verse 8. Also, if you get a chance, look at Psalm 23 and see how the verses 7 and 8 from Psalm 138 relate to Psalm 23. You might see some parallel words and feelings expressed. So those are two great psalms to read on your own. Now let's shift our focus to the gospel. It is from Matthew chapter 16 verse 13 through 20. You can read this passage using Lectio Divino too and see what verses draw your attention. This is the story of when Jesus declared Peter the rock, the foundation of the church, because Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. This is such a powerful passage. Peter is the first to make this declaration about Jesus. He recognizes Jesus is in fact the Son of God, the Messiah. When we hear about Peter, 
the Bible paints a picture of a very human leader with sin and weakness along with many gifts and great faith. Peter is one of my favorite disciples because he failed in some stories and in others he is such a ex strong example of faith for all of us. When we read stories about Peter, we can see ourselves in the narrative too because we struggle just like him. Even when Peter denied knowing Christ, God never turned his back on him. He was forgiven. He was not forsaken. Remember that response from the Responsorial Psalm 138? Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Think about how that relates to Peter. Jesus knew when he declared Peter the rock that Peter would deny him three times. But he did not forsake Peter. He continued to teach him and train him to be the church's first leader. Peter was a work of God's hands, and he was not forsaken for his fear. God's love is eternal.